Today, we will learn about the compliance requirements for pharmacovigilance system documents. We will first learn about the documents that are considered under the purview of pharmacovigilance system document. We will then learn about the regulatory requirements, followed by maintenance and update of the pharmacovigilance system document. Finally, we will learn about the role of this document in case of regulatory inspections. We first need to understand which are the pharmacovigilance system documents. These include PSMF or the pharmacovigilance system master file, the SPS or the summary of pharmacovigilance systems, the DDPS or the detailed description of pharmacovigilance system. Besides, there may be country specific requirements such as the PVMF or the pharmacovigilance master file and the pharmacovigilance subsystem file. In some countries, it may be a regulatory requirement to maintain a pharmacovigilance system document and hence mandatory for the marketing authorization holders in these countries. It is always a good practice to have procedures for periodic updates to the pharmacovigilance system document. Besides, the marketing authorization holder needs to ensure that the information is correct at all times. It may be required to submit the pharmacovigilance system document if requested by the regulatory agency. In some countries it may be necessary to submit the pharmacovigilance system document at the time of registration or renewal of licenses. In some countries, the regulatory agency may request the marketing authorization holder to submit a concise summary or the SPS, which is the summary of pharmacovigilance system. This is mainly because the PSMF is a bulky document. In Europe, it may be necessary to submit a variation, while submitting the updated pharmacovigilance system document, or the DDPS, that is meant for the veterinary medicinal products. The requirement of a local qualified person goes hand in hand with the pharmacovigilance system document requirement. One can comfortably state that all regulatory agencies that require a pharmacovigilance system document would also require a local qualified person for pharmacovigilance. This person needs to take ownership of the pharmacovigilance system document. Backup provisions may be necessary for the local qualified person, and this needs to be specified in the document. In some companies, the local person may be appointed by the local business partner or the distributor. At times, this activity may even get outsourced locally, in which case, the marketing authorization holder needs to ensure that there are appropriate contracts or agreements in place. It may be prudent to have an SOP for maintenance of the pharmacovigilance system document. It should be able to demonstrate how the marketing authorization holder ensures up-to-date information in this document. There should be a process for periodic revision. Some companies prefer to have different revision timelines for the annexures and the main body. In any case, it is advisable to have appropriate change control measures for updating the pharmacovigilance system document. The main body is the heart of the PSMF, and the most important section too. It should include a summary of the pharmacovigilance system, with appropriate reference to the annexures. One needs to include the open corrective and preventive actions associated with major or critical observations and deviations. Once the actions are completed, this information can be pushed to the logbook of the pharmacovigilance system document. Many marketing authorization holders prefer to share only the main body, when requested by a business partner, or during due diligence processes. The logbook or the Annex I, is the final section of the PSMF, which is an extremely important one, and very frequently reviewed during an inspection. The logbook is an important indicator of the pharmacovigilance system. 
one needs to ensure that all the historical changes are accurately reflected in the logbook. The marketing authorization holder needs to maintain transparency with regards to the additions and deletions in the various sections of the PSMF. Many a times, companies may consider sharing of the pharmacovigilance document. We can have multiple marketing authorization holders having a common document. This will mean a common pharmacovigilance system and the QPPV. This is more common across company affiliates or subsidiaries. However, please remember that the quality management systems in these companies may still be different. It is acceptable for the MAH to maintain multiple PSMFs. They can consider different QPPVs for different systems, or same QPPV for different systems. The MAH can even consider a separate PSMF for a particular product. The generic companies may prefer to have a single pharmacovigilance system document, or a single QPPV. The larger pharma companies may consider a hybrid system. Considering the changing regulatory requirements, companies may consider automating the pharmacovigilance system documents. The MAH needs to ensure proper validation and integration, so as to ensure accuracy of the data. The pharmacovigilance system document is generally required to be submitted within seven calendar days of inspection notification. It is generally not practical for the MAH to make gross changes in such short timelines, and hence it is advisable for the MAH to have a robust system for periodically updating the pharmacovigilance system document. Non-compliance associated with pharmacovigilance system documents are not uncommon, and may even include critical observations. The common inspection observation pertains to the main body, where the corrective and preventive actions associated with the critical or major deficiencies in the system may miss to be included. The next common observation pertains to the list of business partners and inclusion of these partners in the quality management system, including audits. Another common observation pertains to completeness of the sources of safety information, where company-sponsored studies in different countries may be missed to be included. Incompleteness of the product list may include non-availability of the commercialization status. Lastly one may identify an incomplete logbook, where the historical changes are missed to be included. What did we learn today? We started off by learning about the documents that are considered under the purview of pharmacovigilance system document. We then learnt about the regulatory requirements, followed by maintenance and update of the pharmacovigilance system document. Finally, we learnt about the role of this document, in case of regulatory inspections. We trust, you found this useful. Feel free to contact us, in case there are any questions, comments, or even suggestions. Also, we request you to subscribe to our channels.